You're gonna learn how to Volvo. We're at Volvo Corporate Headquarters. And today, we're going to take you inside a rock truck. We're gonna cover what it's like to actually run a rock truck from the perspective of a person that's never done it before. Now, I've had the honor and ability to actually be in a rock truck, but my wife never has. And she's going to... <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm laughing with you, honey, not at you. Uh -huh. like, uh -huh. She's going in, into a million dollar rock truck. This is gonna be interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be teaching her how to run this payloader, plus a skid loader, and teaching you guys all of the tricks of the trade as well. So make sure you guys stick around for this heavy equipment series. And we've got Eric. Eric is with Volvo. Eric is going to actually be the one teaching my wife how to run it. Eric, what do you do for Volvo? I'm a product manager. Okay. And so the rock trucks, is that kind of your baby? Yeah, that was my background. Spent a lot of time on, on articulated haulers. Okay, so you're going to teach us what to look for, not just in Volvo, but in rock trucks in general. So if guys are, maybe they don't have a chance to be in a Volvo, but they're gonna be hopping into a different brand rock truck, what are the things, I mean, are they universal overall for the Ab most part? Absolutely, do's and don'ts, they're pretty much the same. It's a, it's a six wheel drive on a big swivel and it can go on any type of terrain. So you just wanna be careful, you don't get it in a pinch and turn it over. Actually, we're gonna be talking about that because there's some safety features built into rock trucks that I don't think most people know about, right? That's, that's exactly right. Our truck has a system where it'll tell you if you're on a slope that's too great so you don't turn it over as you're dumping. So there's different different features built into our truck that actually will help you be safe. All right, well, let's go to the rock truck. Are you ready, Nick? Sure. The level of enthusiasm in her is <laughs> <I> overwhelming. <laughs> I can't believe I talked her into this, actually. All right, look at that beauty. I don't know, man, maybe it's just me, but when I see something like that, that is just awesome. Look at that thing. Sorry, I just had to take that in for a minute, Eric. How do you feel after Excuse seeing it? Yeah, I think I'm almost as tall as the tires. Yeah. The tires are taller than her. Uh-huh. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, so this, so you have actually steps built right into Absolutely, the front of the yeah. grill. Everything's easy to get to. So what are you doing there, Eric? I'm opening the hood. So it's on a hydraulic cylinder that opens the hood. Just showing you how easy everything is to get to. So when a technician has to get into the engine, work on it, it's real easy to get in there. Everything's done at ground level. Uh -huh. It's time to change the oil. All you do is drop a little door right here. This, this door comes down. It's a hydraulically lowering belly plate. You get to the oil, change it. Um, D16 Volvo engine. Um, got your def cap right here. Your fuel on the other side. Everything's really easy to get to. Really technician and user friendly. So you basically call right Absolutely, you can crawl all around that engine. You crawl into the engine yep. to work on. That's a piece of equipment I like. This is awesome. Wow. All right, so your filters, you got filters up front. Yes, yeah, so fuel filters here, engine oil right there. Everything's easy to get to. 
So how does this differ then from a typical 40 ton or smaller rock truck? When you get into these 60, this is a 60 this ton six, And we're the only one that does the 60 ton true six wheel drive articulate hauler. Um, the biggest difference is the payload okay. and horsepower. And then the truck's got to be built to be able to hold the payload. All right. So this is a very heavy duty. It's built like a mining truck. A lot of mining influences went into the design of this truck. Okay, so let me ask you something. What's the difference between an off-road hauler, because that's what you consider okay. this, right? Yeah. And a mining truck. Okay, the difference is you got a six wheel drive platform that's driving the truck. Okay. So six wheel drive versus two wheel drive. So a rigid haul truck is a two wheel drive truck. Just the axles in the back are actually running the truck. So it's great on flat ground, well, this you know, really good haul roads. But when you get a nasty it, dirt, less maintained haul roads, really steep grades, six wheel drive is the way, the only way to get. Okay, so if I heard you right, the difference between this and a mining truck is that this is actually built more for off-road applications Absolutely. where Absolutely. a mining truck is typically built to be put onto haul roads, yeah. which are pretty much what we're on right now. I mean, different pitches and grades, but we're not talking about rough terrain or uneven terrain. This thing is like a giant four-wheel drive pick off-road pickup truck versus a four-wheel drive city truck that probably hauls paper or off the back. Whereas a rigid truck drives in the front, but your front tires actually steer. The whole back of this truck, this hauler haul is actually steering the truck. So you got a swivel right here, it swivels this way, and then you turn this way. So you can go over those different types of terrains that a rigid truck couldn't go over. Okay, so this actually steers more like a payloader then, right? Yeah, so this is, yeah, exactly. So this is a big swivel right here. There's tapered roller bearings in here that are greased for life. There's no maintenance here. And it allows that truck to actually turn like this back and forth over the terrain. So you're going like this. Mm -hmm. So if you were in a rigid truck, it'd be going like this. Okay. It would, you wouldn't get the good ride. Okay. Now that's also a safety feature. Absolutely. The safety feature is, is you can tip this part of the truck over while the cab stays stationary. Yes. If you're, if you're not careful what you're doing, how you're loading and unloading these trucks, mm -hmm. it can turn over. Yes, absolutely. So if it turns over, what are we damaging? Just the side of the truck. So it basically lays over on the side. You bring an excavator back over, pull it over. What about the exhaust system? That has springs in there and they actually pull away from each other. So do you have to put a new? You'll have, no, you'll have to just put it back together. You don't need a new exhaust system? No, no. typically not. What about, what about the hydraulic hoses that are right here? Those are meant to flop over. So this is just gonna come over this way or come over that way. Volvo's designed this thing to let it flop mm -hmm. over. This, the exhaust will pull apart. Yep. A guy out in the field, if he's up in Canada and he's not near anywhere near where there's a mm -hmm. repair shop, he's got his excavator, he can flip it back over, mm -hmm. hook that exhaust back up himself. He doesn't even have to worry about yep. the hoses at that point, mm -hmm. right? Yep. All right, guys, we're going to drive a 60-ton rock truck. Wife drove this hill 
half a dozen times. Feet, hands nothing off. Nothing. Nothing. Feet off, everything's off. And we hit the go pedal. We should take back over. You can't even see over the, that's how steep this hill is. That's actually pretty cool. So as we come down, a guy actually tipped one of these over. How many, what do you have, 45 ton on? Yeah, at least 45 ton. 45 ton, and then he got picky panicked. And uh, as he was coming up over here, he was coming down, instead of hitting the brake, he accidentally, well I think accidentally, well yeah, he, he wouldn't flip a million dollar rock truck over on purpose, right? He accidentally hit the, the gold pedal and uh, throttled it all the way up right here with a full load on and dumped everything over. Then continued to panic and instead of hitting the brake, drug the back end of the truck up. Did he go straight or did he go up this hill? He went straight. Straight up this hill right here. Straight up this hill. Yeah. <laughs> it happens, guys. It happens. These things are like a Cadillac, man. I'm serious. These, these trucks are so nice to drive. We have a system that's built into our truck. It's called dump support system. And it actually tells you when you're on a too great a slope when you're trying to dump. So when you go to raise the bed to dump, yep. it'll give you an alarm, tell you to stop. And it can also be set up with a, a bed stop where it completely stops and won't let you dump. Do a lot of guys opt for that system? Is that optional or is that a lot, a, a lot of operators like having it because it builds that safety feature into the truck. It makes it dummy proof. So, it's, so if you were an owner operator, you probably, I would see where you may not care, but if you're an owner operator and you're gonna put a, uh, an employee into mm -hmm. that, Absolutely. and then you put him out in the field, mm -hmm. you're going to have that in there. Yeah. Because you're going, you're gonna want every safety feature, every mm -hmm. alarm, bell and whistle that's gonna stop yeah. somebody that may be as green as my wife at running mm -hmm. a truck from mm -hmm. wrecking a million, almost a million dollar mm -hmm. all right. truck. Okay. Exactly right. All of that makes sense. I hope that cleared it up. It cleared it up for me, Eric. But did it clear it up for you guys? But, you know, more important, that cleared up for you, honey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Sure. Okay, so when you're up on the hill over there and you're going to try to dump, if oh, the hill. alarm, there's a giant hill they have in the middle of the. Have you not seen that hill? What's the grade on that hill, Eric? It's about 30 degrees at the top. It's, it's steep. When you're driving up it, you can't see over the nose of your truck. Don't worry, don't get, don't be afraid. <laughs> I don't know why she stays married to me. What else should we look for as we're doing the initial walk around on this thing, Eric? You know, wet disc brakes on all the axles keeps you good and safe while you're driving. Slow down quickly. Okay. Um, we have a very, very good suspension system on this truck. We have actually a hydraulic suspension on the front that is active. So it's completely feeling the road as you drive and it's reacting to the road. So it keeps the tires on the ground and gives you a good ride less fatigue for the operator over time oh yeah so it's re really good ride very very robust big axles in the back so you can handle that 60 ton load or better mm -hmm. whatever you're carrying we have a backup camera it is on all the time so you can watch and see what's behind you what's happening as you back up that load or back up to the excavator that's loading you we have a system that's called 
ATC, automatic traction control. So basically what's happening is the front axle and the mid axle are the ones that are doing the, the actual driving, okay? What happens is when it feels a slippage in the system, when you slip on the road or slip on the, in the dirt, that back axle kicks in automatically. So what happens is it saves tire, tire wear and it saves fuel. Very fuel efficient truck. Good visibility from the cab, glass all the way around. This door is very good to see out of. As you look down, you can see what's going on behind the truck. Uh, heated mirrors. There's mirrors you can adjust electrically however you want to be able to see what's going on around you. Also have, you see these LED lights at the top? That is your load weighing system, onboard weighing system. So as you're getting loaded, the operator can actually see where you're at in the loading cycle. So green is perfectly loaded, yellow is nominally loaded, means load more, red is overloaded. So very nice features built in the truck that, that help that operator and help the operator that's loading um, see what's going on. On both sides of the cab? Yeah, it's on both sides. So that, right above the mirror right there. Yep, I okay. see that. Warning beacon, you can turn that on. People can see where you're at on the job site. So. All right, well, can we go inside of it and Absolutely. check it out? let's do it. All right, we're going into the cab, guys. So there's a seat behind the seat. That's for training. Uh, it's actually a really spacious, well laid out cab. The thing with these things, Eric, is um, they're really simple to drive. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there really is not, they're not that difficult, that's why I'm taking the mystery out of these things. I would say, I would say this truck, the 65 ton rock truck, is much easier to drive than that tow truck or that service truck over there. It's way more difficult to drive than this truck. Night and day. This truck has a what's called a Jake brake, which is an engine brake. Yeah, Volvo engine brake. An engine brake, and a Jake brake is the same as a, an over-the-road semis, and what it basically does, instead of breaking the wheels, this, which it has, you know, standard brakes, but it also, the Jake brake will break the engine, slow the engine down, so it's, it's a little, it's a different, definitely a different feel when you, when the Jake brake is engaged, you're gonna notice a definite pull. It's like almost going against you a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Is that this one? That is that one over there. This one? Yep. Yeah. So your your accelerator, your little pedals, your accelerator right there. Mm -hmm. And then that's your brake, the big one. This one. Then that no, that's your that's your service brake. So that yeah. works that works the axle brakes. Okay. So the wet disc brakes that we're talking about, that pedal right there. So push that pedal down right there. This one? Yeah, push it down. Alright. You see that oh. green? Yep. That means you're braking on the axles. Okay. Just like in a car. Yep. So I don't think about a car, you got the pads that go in and out, the slow. Mm -hmm. This is an actual hydraulic brake that is compressing and slowing the vehicle down. Okay? Okay, I'm doing And that one works the engine brake. This one? Yep. And you can hit that one and it's not going to show anything on the screen. Um, so I'm going to, next thing we're going to do, you're going to actually turn this button on right here. What's that do? That is your hydraulic suspension. Pull up, pull up on that, and then oh. push at the same time. Good. Oh, all right. Uh. <laughs> all right. So the right. escape here. Oh, geez. All right. So you feel the truck moving around. <laughs> yeah. So it, the suspension is getting charred. The hydraulics is going into the front suspension, leveling out the truck. And this suspension is is reactive. So it actually reacts to the road, gives you a better ride, okay? Uh-huh. All right? So you just leave that alone? Just just turn it on when you get in the truck and leave it alone. You don't have to do anything, okay? Is it on right now? It's on right now. Oh, okay. You see that green arrow pointing down in the spring? That means the suspension is engaged. Oh, all right. Okay? All right? All right, guys, well, I hope this video's helped you out. It was a ton of fun making. It was a blast having my wife there. The people at Volvo, I'm gonna tell you straight up, the people at Volvo, are they're just awesome folks. I mean, down to earth, just awesome, good, 
people. I want to give a big thank you to them. I hope you guys have appreciated this video. Make sure you stick around because we're going to be showing you guys how to run a payloader. We're also going to show you how to run a skid steer. We're also going to be talking in depth about compaction, how to run a compactor, but also what does compaction even mean? What are lifts? What is this whole technology and what is, why is that important? And it really, really literally is one of the most important things. And then we're also going to be bringing you one of the latest and greatest innovations in excavators. And that's called a tilt rotator. In this case, we're gonna be talking about one called the steel wrist but we're going to